Tonight, we report on the murder of a Moses Lake teenager and how people enjoyed the daddy-daughter dinner dance in Ephrata. What's happening in sports, Bob? There was plenty of exciting basketball and wrestling action going on over the weekend. Stay tuned to find out how your favorite team performed. Here's a look at our Weather Center forecast. And from the Weather Department, we're looking at a rather unsettled pattern continuing for, oh, two, three more days. But then, later in the work week, more seasonal and quieter weather. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Brandon Michael Mendy was shot and killed at a party early Sunday morning. It was the second time the 16-year-old Moses Lake teenager was shot this year. The Grant County Sheriff's Office is investigating the murder that happened at 6020 Turnkey Road Northeast in Larson, a community adjacent to Moses Lake. In January, a pair of males in a white Kia fired multiple shots at Mendy in the 1200 block of Arlington Drive, hitting him twice in the arm and shoulder. He was chased between homes and escaped into a home where he called 911. Grant County Sheriff Tom Jones said Mendy and witnesses did not cooperate after the first shooting and that invest investigators are having a difficult time after the murder on Sunday morning. The Sheriff's Office is asking anyone with information about the murder to contact them by calling 509-762-1160 or send information by email to crimetips at co.grant dot wa dot us people providing information can remain anonymous the moses lake school district made an announcement about what to do with an aging pool cover here with the story is cameron probert moses lake high school's swimming pool is getting a new home the school board accepted a 2.6 million dollar bid from spokane's leone and keeble to build a concrete block building around the pool. The building is replacing a soft cover presently around the pool. Superintendent Michelle Price said the cover is developing mold and the structure has air quality issues. The money for the project is coming from a 2007 bond, which was used to build two new elementary schools, said Mark Johnson, the school district's executive director of business and operations. The Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction is expected to contribute about half the money to construct the building. The new building will be slightly larger than the plastic cover presently around the pool and contain new seating and locker rooms. For iFiber One News, this is Cameron Probert reporting. Thank you, Cameron. A group of fathers did a nice thing for their daughters and reporter Vivian Huang was on hand. The Afreda Recreation Center was decked out with paper lanterns, twinkling lights, and cupcakes for the city's seventh annual Daddy-Daughter Dinner Dance on Saturday. Efreda Recreation Coordinator Carrie Sawyer said she feels the dinner dance has become an essential part of the city. Oh, definitely. Um, I came here about a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, and it was actually about this time. Um, and all I was hearing about was the daddy-daughter dinner dance, um, which I'm from Moses Lake and I wasn't actually familiar with it until I came here. But from what I had heard since I've been here, it's kind of a staple, it's huge, <laughs> um, and so to be a part of it this year is really exciting. Sawyer said coming up with the Butterfly Kisses theme was a crucial part of planning the dance. It was something that my director and I and his wife, we kind of just collaborated and sat down in his office and said, you know, what do we want to do different this year, what worked last year, what would we like to um, kind of do differently this year, and just, I'm not even sure who said it. I think my director, Ray, actually said, um, what about butterfly kisses? And we kind of just played off on that theme. Um, we had been looking on the internet, um, elegant themes kind of matching with the butterfly kisses, um, and it just kind of rolled in place. The turnout for this year's Daddy-Daughter Dinner Dance was the biggest they've ever had. For iFiber One News, this is Vivian Huang. Looks like it was a great time. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. Each of the people you see here has warrants for their arrest and is wanted by various law enforcement agencies. 
If you see any of these people, the Department of Corrections asks that you do not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. We'll be right back after this. DQ five buck lunch. I'm really into it. One thing I can't decide. Is it chicken strips, fries, and a drink with a free Sunday, or do you get a Sunday with free chicken strips, fries, and a drink? Trick question. Both answers are correct. Exactly, Sam. It's Fanonomics. Entree, fries, drink, plus a Sunday. The five buck lunch. Only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. Looking for that authentic Philly flavor? Come down to Nia Carson's Cheesesteaks Wings and Things and try our mouthwatering cheesesteak sandwiches. Prepared fresh and served hot. Make sure to pair it up with our classic wings, ranging from sweet and tangy to hot and spicy. East meets West at Nia Carson's. We provide Moses Lake with that authentic Philadelphia taste. Bring the whole family. We promise to make them something they'll all enjoy. Nia Carson's Cheesesteaks Wings and Things. Good service, great price, and something different. And hi there, everybody. Hope your day went well on this Monday. Meteorologist Don Morelli with you here on iFiber Channel 1 News Weather. And of course, we remain in an unsettled pattern as we have been for about a week now, it seems like. A very unsettled pattern into Thursday. But after Thursday, oh, does it look nice. We have a strong cold front, though, coming on in. And this means a little trouble with some winds starting overnight tonight through tomorrow. Rain, moderate intensity, possibly. And then the snow level dropping down to the valley floor by Wednesday morning. After that goes through, another little band may come on through late Wednesday night and Thursday morning. But then after that, oh, does it look nice. Seasonal drier conditions later on this week. So, again, not too bad once we go through about 72 more hours. 50 degrees this afternoon, way above normal. 43 being the normal daytime high. 37 in the morning low. Again, above normal temperatures, not too bad to take, is it? But a little chilly temperatures are going to come our way with a strong cold front coming towards us. 51 and 40 in the Moses Lake for the extremes, again, an above normal day. And as we slide through the evening hours, looking at a setting sun with a temperature of 42 degrees, it's about where the daytime high should be. So with a setting sun this time of the year, late February or mid-February, I guess, uh, not too bad to take with the thermometer. Well, Mother Nature has some plans of changes in our little pattern for the next couple of days. Here we are right now. The Cascades continue to see the bands of moisture squeezing out some snow for you ski lovers. But watch what happens as we slide into Tuesday. A strong cold front comes on in. Look at those yellows and dark greens. Moderate intensity starting during the afternoon particularly and coming across into the basin and drying out a bit during the day Wednesday only to see another slug of moisture coming in later on Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So you get the picture. We have a little couple of systems to move on through before we really see a drying trend. Our state forecast, cloudy skies, windy, and looking at the temperatures in the mid to high 40s, heavy range along the coast, high elevation snows, in the northwest, windy and temperatures mainly above freezing, but the snow level, again, uh, it looks like it'll be about 3,000 feet, but dropping during the overnight. You can see temperatures generally into the 40s with wind whipped rain across the area for times during the afternoon especially. After that moves through, a little break Wednesday, and then we see another little band moving in on Thursday morning. 20% chance that some of that could be in the form of snow with a temperature around 30 degrees by morning, but that'll brighten up by late in the day, and then we see a nice stretch of drier conditions taking us out of the work week, and next weekend looks very, very nice. Temperature's not as warm as what we have been seeing, but still very pleasant. So we'll get through Tuesday together, won't we? And not too bad. Keep it here. Sports is coming up next. Build anything with the new Toyota Tundra. Toyota, let's go places.
Good food, cold beer, and plenty of entertainment. That's what Sporty Steakhouse is all about. Open 6 a.m. every day. We offer over 100 reasonably priced menu items with 24 different ice cold beers on tap and a wide variety of spirits. Come in with your favorite group, watch the game on our big screen TV, shoot pool, play shuffleboard, and more. We have live music and DJs, so find us on Facebook for upcoming events. Located on East Broadway Avenue in Moses Lake. Sporty Steakhouse, where good friends meet. Welcome back. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick with today's local sports. Big Bend basketball split games with Walla Walla at home Saturday. The Lady Vikings played catch up the entire 40 minutes in the first game of the afternoon. Big Bend had trouble knocking down shots for the second game in a row and suffered its second loss in as many contests, 83-72 to the Warriors in front of a sparse home crowd. The Lady Vikings trailed 36-31 at the break and was down 74-59 midway through the second half, but went on a 13-9 run late to make a game of it. Riley Jamet led Big Bend with 22 points. The loss drops the Lady Vikings to 6-6 six six in the NWAC East Region standings with two games left in the regular season. The running Vikes dominated play in the second game of the afternoon. Brendan Westendorf got Big Bend out and running early with two fast break buckets to start the action, and the team never looked back as they ran past Walla Walla 84-69. The running Vikes hit 54% of their field goals in the first half and had a 23-15 edge on the boards to take a 42-31 lead into the locker room at intermission. The Warriors scored 38 second half points, but Big Ben posted 42 to win going away. Westendorf knocked down a game high 35 points. Richard Black finished with 18. The running Vikes moved to eight and four with the win and into, a, into second place tie with Columbia Basin. Both teams have clinched a playoff spot with two games left in the regular season. Big Bend is back on the hardwood for a road game at Wenatchee Valley College Wednesday and closes out conference play at home against Spokane on Saturday. Three down and one to go. That's where the number one ranked Moses Lake Chiefs stand after taking the 4A Region 4 Wrestling Championships Saturday at Pasco High School. Moses Lake continues its dream, dream season as the team finished undefeated to claim the Columbia Basin Big Nine Conference title, was crowned District 4A champion, and has just one more goal set at the beginning of the season to accomplish, bring home a state championship. The Chiefs dominated the competition with 14 wrestlers placing. Moses Lake crowned three champions in Trey Long, Fernando Leva, and Jordan LaSalle. The Chiefs will be sending 10 wrestlers to the Matt Classic February 21 and 22 at the Tacoma Dome. Well, Quincy came up a half point short of repeating as regional champion at the 1A Region 4 tournament at Freeman High School. The Jacks had an outstanding tournament with three of their 10 placers crowned regional champion. Quincy will be sending eight wrestlers to the state tournament. Efreda finished eighth at the 2A Great Northern CWAC Regional Wrestling Tournament at West Valley High School. The Tigers will be sending four wrestlers to the Matt Classic, including defending state champion Tyrus Kemp at 195 pounds. The Lady Tigers, Chloe Spencer at 130 pounds, will be making the trip to Tacoma as well. The Moses Lake Christian Academy Lady Lions closed out the regular season with a 71-5 win over Wilson Creek at home Thursday. It was evident the game would be one-sided early on as the Lions led 20-1 five and a half minutes into the contest and were up 28-1 at the end of the first quarter. The Academy pushed the score to 43 at the break as Anna Yarborough and Danny Sandberg worked the give and go to perfection to score 14 points each. Yarborough finished with 28 points, Sandberg added 22. The victory nailed down the Central Washington 1B South Conference title, the number one seed for the district tournament, and puts the Lions into the championship game against the North Conference number one seed Thursday evening at 8.30 at Efreda High School. Well, on paper, it appeared the Academy boys would have an easy time with winless Wilson Creek in the second game of the night. But the Devils gave the Lions fits the majority of the contest as they were determined to play the spoiler role and knock Moses Lake Christian down to the number three seed for the district tournament. The teams battled to a 21-20 halftime score that favored the Lions. The home team, knowing what was at stake, came out on a, 
Out of the break, that is, on a 9-1 run to push its lead to 31-22. But that was as close as Wilson Creek would get as the Lions pulled away for the 47-34 win. Spencer McNamara scored 14 points and hauled down a game-high 20 rebounds to lead the way for Moses Lake Christian. The Afraid of Lady Tigers took an earlier-than-expected exit from postseason play in a 63-51 loss to Grandview at home in the first round of the CWAC 2A Girls District Tournament Saturday. Well, that's it for sports. We'll be right back after this. Did you know that Little Chiefs Child Care is expanding their Juniper Street location? This great new place across from Moses Lake Clinic is designed just for preschool and school-aged children. For over eight years, Little Chiefs kids like me have found the love and attention every child needs to be healthy and happy. The grown-ups there have gone to college, so they know how to make sure kids from 1 month to 12 years old have a great place to learn and play. Come join our growing Little Chiefs tribe. Hello, my name is Cheryl Kono. I am your local Efreda Farmers Insurance Agent. Here at Cheryl Kono Insurance Agency, our customers always come first. We don't just work here, we live here. Please stop by the office, call, email, or Facebook me for a free auto, home, life, business, or farm and ranch quote today. We are insurance, we are farmers. Come in for a free quote today. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Our spotlight story tonight is about how a team of students are heading to the state competition with their roulettes. Reporter Vivian Huang has the story. 27 teams gathered at Chief Moses Middle School to compete in the Central and Eastern Washington First Lego League semifinal competition. Yeah, we are a statewide organization. We have 879 teams across the state, kindergarten through 12th grade, and our mission is science, technology, and teamwork where uh, kids really learn about STEM. We call it STEM in action because um, they have an opportunity to practice on robots, but they really develop tremendous leadership and team building skills, as well as business planning, marketing, um, in addition to code and fabrication of the robot. Among these teams are three Moses Lake teams, Robo Nerds, Robo Sparks, and Robo Storms. As coaches, we pretty much don't pay attention to the details of programming them. We don't know how to program them. Um, that's good for the coach because I can't answer their question. I can't say, oh, you need to go into this program and change this line here and change that step there. You need to, I can't, I don't know how to do that. Um, and that's deliberate because the kids need to learn how to do that. They do all the programming. They write the program. Um, they test the program and they learn how to adjust the program to make it work. And what we will do as coaches is we'll go and ask them questions like, why are you doing it that way? Would there be an easier way to do it? Um, trying to, the, the best we do for guidance is we ask them questions to get them to think about something maybe in a different way. But for these rookies who had never done this before, to go from, wow, nothing worked, to, okay, we're gonna make some changes, and then to make those changes, run them on the board, and see success really taught them, I think, a lesson about perseverance under pressure. And if you just calm down, do your job, get your job done, your team will succeed. For programmers like Amariah Adams, trial and error is half the fun. Definitely the programming, just because it's you're just guessing at first. So when you go to do something, you just throw out numbers, and then in the end, you can get it down pretty easy. Fellow programmer Molly Vega somewhat embraces the minor imperfections of robotics. Having a lot of epic fails except when it's kind of funny because it likes to roll over and play dead a lot. Team Robo Nerds will be heading to Central Washington University on February 22nd for the first LEGO League Washington State Championships. And Team RoboSparks took home a Core Values Award for gracious professionalism at the semifinals. For iFiber One News, this is Vivian Huang. We will be right back after this. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. The 
patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. My mom was never comfortable in any of her chairs. Getting in and out of them was hard on her joints. We found a solution at In Home Medical. They have a great selection of lift chairs, many cost less than national brand recliners, some even featuring heating and vibration for added comfort. They can take her from a flat sleeping position to nearly standing. We found everything she needs for a much better quality of life at In Home Medical. In Northwest News, two cousins in Seattle are recovering after an explosion Sunday at their house. They were working on a science project. The father of one of the boys says they were apparently trying to start a fire in the fireplace and may have used rocket fuel from their schoolwork. The explosion broke windows in the living room and kitchen. It also sent some debris into the backyard. Investigators found several homemade fireworks, bottle rockets, small aerial display mortars, and a skyrocket. Police say they took the items to be destroyed. Former professional football player Clint Didier says he'll run for Congress. Didier, a former professional football player who ran unsuccessfully as a Republican for the Senate in 2010, announced today that he'll seek the fourth district seat being vacated by Representative Doc Hastings. The Republican Hastings announced last week he'll retire at the end of the year after representing the district for 20 years. In 2012, Didier also ran for Washington Public Lands Commissioner, losing to Peter Goldmark. Didier was born into a farm family in Altopia. He won two Super Bowl rings with the Washington Redskins. And that's going to do it for us here at i 501 News. We want to thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.